It's a terrible disease. It's Epstein's anomaly. Uh, it's an anomaly of the tricuspid valve. This tricuspid valve is very uh, dysplastic. The, the septal leaflet is stuck. The heart is huge compared to the chest. And the blood's really just swirling around in here, so it's not getting to where it needs to go. Uh, in a multi-center study that we participated in that originated in Boston that was led by Dr. Floyd, mortality um, uh, in the current era uh, was 45% overall, uh, with a significant in utero death of 17%. Predictors of mortality were early diagnosis, a big tricuspid valve, presence of effusions or early high drops, and the presence of primary insufficiency. And non-survivors um, had low birth weight and early gestational age at delivery, usually because they were hydropic, and then pulmonary insufficiency at any gestation. So that's an important marker for us to look at. So here now, looking at in this particular patient of this pulmonary outflow, there is no forward flow. This red represents significant pulmonary insufficiency. So this certainly is a high-risk patient. So what do we do for these kids? Well, it's up to us in um, the fetal cardiology world to try to decide if the pulmonary valve is a credit or just not opening. If it does open and there's pulmonary insufficiency, this is what is called the circular shunt, which is backwards flow across that pulmonary valve, backwards flow across the tricuspid valve, and the blood just kind of gets stuck in this path doesn't make it to the body. So in this instance, we think the ductus is at least partially the problem, so no prostaglandin is initiated, versus those that have true pulmonary atresia, we do start prostaglandin in the delivery room. The specialized strategies for ventilation um, certainly, again, include getting total control of uh, ventilation um, to maximize oxygen delivery, intubating, sedating, and paralyzing, and we want to try to decrease the pulmonary resistance if that pulmonary valve is open in, um, at least in the delivery room, until we get to the ICU where then a reassessment is made. We use 100% oxygen and then consider using nitric oxide in the delivery room, again, to rapidly uh, help that baby transition. ECMO is used for this as backup as well until we can figure out what surgical 